Joseph, thank you so much for being here with Voice of the Vatican today. Thank you. Joseph, I know that you're working with HLI, Human Life International, and you're based in Paris. Would you tell us a bit about your work there, what you're doing? Absolutely, yeah. So I finished my studies here in Rome, mm -hmm. and uh, after the bioethics, I went into the practical ethics. So uh, working out of Paris for the French-speaking countries of the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are over 50 countries in the world that are predominantly French-speaking, some in Europe, but mostly in Africa. So I've been doing a lot of work traveling down to Africa, also working at the European institutions, going over to Geneva, uh, working with the UN there. So it's, it's been kind of a very broad-based apostolate for Human Life International, but um, working primarily with our African brothers and sisters. Hmm. And, and what's happening in Africa? What kind of initiatives are going on in the world of pro-life? You know, it's beautiful. We, we have a very strong program of Seminarians for Life. And uh, you go to these seminaries that are cracking full. I mean, so many, they, they're, they're building new seminaries because they don't have enough space. And, and all these seminaries are on fire for going out and evangelizing and talking about the culture of life and talking about Christ. And it's very, very beautiful to see. And so when we come in, we just feel like, you know, we can't hardly give them enough. They want more and more and more. And you can kind of like, wow, wow. I, I went to this one parish and they were doing, uh, it was during Lent and they were doing the Friday uh, Way of the Cross. And so I was like, okay, we'll go to the Way of the Cross. It's wonderful. And there were a thousand people at the parish and they were just standing room only. The Way of the Cross lasted an hour. I was like, this is wonderful. And he says, yeah, this is the third way the cross we did today. It is actually smaller attendance than the other two. <laughs> I was like, this is the faith is alive here. It's good. Wow. That's great to hear. Yeah. Now, Joseph, of course, in your home base of Paris, it's been interesting to see that there have been a lot of grassroots initiative, especially supporting traditional family, et cetera. Now, Paris, we hear about as a secular city. France has become a secular nation, sadly. But who are these people that are out and supporting? It's wonderful to see. I mean, in France, you have this, I would say, almost like a subgroup, you know, the population that is very generous to life. And families having six, seven children, very faithful, and, and they're coming up. You know, it's interesting if, if you're faithful and you're generous to what God wants, um, you get all these blessings. And so all of a sudden, they, they've been seeing how their country's been sort of drifting, you know, and, and going with the culture, going against life, going against marriage, et cetera. And they, they just sort of stood up, you know, and, and they realized there are millions of us. We, we thought we were just here and there, et cetera, but there are so many of them. And the interesting thing that I've noticed, um, and, you know, I've been going to France for years, half my family's French, but um, in the last few years, maybe last five, 10 years, um, this this revival in sort of going out into the world, you know, not, not just having your own private Catholic life, but actually going out. And so pilgrimages, people going out on foot. And I, I was just recently, there's a pilgrimage that went back to the ninth century, the ninth century AD. It was to thank God for the defeat of the Vikings who had come and sacked Paris. And when they finally resolved the problem with the Vikings and converted the Vikings, uh, to become Catholics, they said, well, we have to thank Our Lady for this. So there's this pilgrimage that's been going on for over a thousand years. And our little parish, you know, is, is going out there on foot, walking all the way out from Paris to Normandy to thank God for, for this wonderful blessing from the ninth century. But they're starting to do this all over the place. It's really wonderful. Well, it's so hopeful to hear. And, and Joseph, what would you say is your vision for working with these 50 French-speaking countries that you do through HLI? What are you hoping to bring to them or them bring to the church? Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful to see. I mean, one of the things that's happening right now is, you know, we run around France and you see all these African priests because they've had such a vocations crisis in France, they don't have enough priests. And so the places that had received the missionaries from France in the 19th century to early 20th century are now receiving the fruits of that. And all these priests are coming back from the Congo, from Gabon, from you know, Ivory Coast, et cetera, going back to France to re-evangelize the home country that had come to them. So I'm, I'm seeing a, a very strong relationship there you know, of giving back and forth. The universal church uh, sort of taking care of its own and, uh, and helping the, the Catholic Church in France actually to revive uh, through the former places that were evangelized. And so, and back and forth, I'm, I'm taking French people over to Africa to help with some of their material needs and to, to give them training on the life and family issues, to tell them what the threats are, you know, what, what problems are coming towards them, where they, they still have strong, good laws, protecting life, uh, strong families, but what threats do exist, you know, and we can, we can give them the experience of what's happened in Europe, what's happened in other countries. So I've been trying to really connect the two as much as possible. Hmm. Pope Francis has spoken about the importance of Europe remaining as, as a leader in, in the humanitarian fight for the world. How do you see Europe fitting into the, this, this fight for life? 
Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, Europe is very much divided into two camps. You know, you've got sort of the Western Europeans and the Central and Eastern Europeans. And, and the countries that suffered under communism, in a certain sense, um, were protected against a lot of this sort of radical liberalism, radical feminism, etc. And, and they have turned into the leaders. Interestingly enough, um, Poland and Hungary and Slovakia and a lot of these countries are, are really kind of showing the way in terms of defending the family and defending life. Uh, France, on the other hand, very interestingly, has always had a strong family policy. So uh, no matter whether you're rich or poor, if you have a large family, the government is actually supporting that and saying, look, we believe uh, families are important. And so I think some of those initiatives have been important and strong. I think the other thing too um, is all these wonderful shrines. I mean, you look at, uh, I just went to this place, it was called France Miniature, Miniature France. And you, you visit on 132nd scale, all the monuments of France, and there are all these churches, all these cathedrals, all these shrines. You're like, there, there's so many spiritual riches here that you know, need to go out to the world. And not just Lourdes, you know, not just La Salette, not just Pont Main, not just the Rue du Bac, but all these places. And I, I see France in particular, you know, as this place that has so much of a spiritual heritage that needs to be valorized, that needs to be spread around. You know, we're, we're coming up actually on the 500th anniversary, I think, of Saint uh, Louis-Marie Grignon de Montfort. So there are all these, these uh, centuries and centuries of, of treasures of the faith that need to be uh, valorized more. They just had actually the, the uh, exposition of the, of the Saint, of uh, the Saint Tunique du Christ, so the, the Holy Tunic of Christ, which is a national thing. Normally it's only exposed every 50 years. So it's like the, the Shroud of Turin, but it was the Tunic of Christ that was, that was stripped off of him before the crucifixion. And they only showed it every 50 years. And they had hundreds of thousands of people who came out. They would had a special exposition here for, uh, for the whole year. But it's true. I mean, Europe has a huge heritage that needs to, needs to spread, you know, and, and people need to go there and, and see what's going on and help the local church to revive. Oh, Joseph, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Are there any last thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think it's it's so important to see how universal the church is. You know, uh, I've traveled all over the world to all the continents, and, and everywhere I go, I see the same beautiful Catholic church. And it's fun, interesting to see how they're defending life and family everywhere I go. You know, it's it's this fundamental root of all of society. We have to you know, respect the basic building block of society, which is marriage and the family. And if we don't, we see all the problems that, that show up. So the church is there and, uh, and the church needs to grow and have more missionaries, more people going out. And I think not just in one direction. It's wonderful to have missionaries from Africa going to Europe, as well as missionaries from Europe going to Africa. And the same thing with Latin America going to the US and, and from parts of Asia going to other parts of Asia. It's, it's beautiful to see that universality. Joseph, thank you so much for being here with Voice of the Vatican today. May God bless you in your work. Thank you very much.